with number one, this recorded webinar, number two, a little survey asking for a little bit of feedback. And then the third thing is going to include a link for my upcoming webinars to register so you can continue to learn more about Priority Matrix. For the duration of this presentation, I'm going to continue with my camera off so I can ensure a good connection for the screen share portion. If you do have any questions during this webinar, you can either drop them in the chat and I'll be happy to answer them for you at the very end or just write them down and remember them. And I'm actually going to save time to do a live Q&A so I'll be able to actually take you off mute and we'll be able to talk through your questions. You should be able to see my screen now, but please, if there's any technical issues during the duration of this webinar, please let me know. Um, I'm actually hosting this off of my hotspot because we recently moved and the timing just so happens that the Wi-Fi is getting put in tomorrow. So I've been able to successfully host a couple of webinars so far through my hotspot without any issues, but um, just kind of a, a warning there. Please, please, please let me know if for whatever reason you can't hear me or you're not able to see my screen, but we should be looking at my PowerPoint together at this point. With all of that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So today's topic is how a service desk manager can stay sane while wearing multiple hats every single day. So priority matrix is for service desk managers who struggle to manage all of the following responsibilities. So what do common tasks and responsibilities look like for a service desk manager? Some common responsibilities can include onboarding new employees, staff scheduling, vendor management, budgeting, workload balancing, and major incidents. So I've been with Priority Matrix for just about six years now. It'll be six years next month, which is honestly just crazy to say time really flies by. But over the past couple of years, I've been lucky enough to talk to a lot of our first time users and also our long term customers as well. In that group of people, there have definitely been some service desk managers or kind of leaders in similar roles. And so I've been able to get kind of an understanding about what those common responsibilities look like. And with that, what the challenges can typically look like when there's not a good system in place to help you see all of your projects and priorities in one place while also being able to collaborate with your teammates. So what is the priority matrix approach to support service desk managers? Our approach offers an effective and visual approach to managing priorities that surfaces contextually relevant information while users are in a meeting, responding to emails, or focusing on projects. Like so many companies over the past several years, I can likely guess that you're probably using the office ecosystem more than ever. So, you know, just a couple of years ago, I would come across people who were definitely using Outlook 365, but Honestly, Microsoft Teams was not so much on the forefront as it is now with everybody working from home, and it's honestly just been adopted so heavily. So over the past, probably the past two years or so, one of our biggest focuses was getting Priority Matrix fully integrated into Teams and fully integrated into Outlook. So you can continue to work in the platforms that you know and that you trust and that you're already using every single day, while being able to basically level up. So you no longer have to re re uh, rely on sending chats through channels and on one, -on -one chats in Teams and kind of just cross your fingers <laughs> that those priorities don't slip through the cracks. With our integrations, you're able to immediately prioritize those conversations, those emails, and something very unique to Priority Matrix is that while you're gonna be working through the Office ecosystem, you are indeed still able to collaborate with external parties. We don't place any barriers when it comes to that. So for the next probably 15 minutes or so, we're actually going to be taking a look at the live Priority Matrix demo. So what am I going to show you during this demo? I'm going to start with a really quick kind of basic overview. So for those of you on this webinar today, 
it's potentially your first time ever seeing priority matrix. So I don't want to jump in and confuse you all before we kind of walk through the basics. That'll be just a quick intro. I want to show you how you can approach recurring processes by using templates and recurring tasks. We're going to look at strategies for having effective meetings via priority matrix. And we're also going to take a very close look at some of our reporting, which focus specifically on workload management across your team or even across the whole organization, if that's what you need. Lastly, we're going to touch on escalation and cross department collaboration. So, for example, if a service desk manager gets a ticket that needs to be escalated or shared with IT, that's definitely possible through the priority matrix platform. All right, so thank you all for staying tuned until the live demo portion. I'm going to switch gears here, and what we're actually looking at now is my priority matrix running 100% through Microsoft Teams. So you'll notice in the top left corner, I have my priority matrix open, and then I actually have it pinned there. So 100%, I recommend adding priority matrix to Teams, pinning it open, and then it's going to stay there for you where you don't have to go and search for it every time that you would like to use it. So what's in the middle of my screen here? Priority matrix allows you to prioritize your action items, whether on an individual level or with your teammates or even external parties by setting up projects. And these projects can represent, you know, long term things that you have very planned out and that you're working towards finishing. Or you can just kind of think of it as a, a way to group similar priorities together. Again, these projects can either be shared with your teammates or they can be kept for just kind of your own priority and task management. If you're working with clients and external collaborators, it's going to be possible to share these projects 100% with them as well or through a read only version if that's what you prefer. So when I open up one of these projects, or let's go to one that has a little bit more context here. When I open up one of these projects, this is now that central space where a service desk manager would be able to, you know, track all of the moving parts for a specific project that they're working in. This manager would be able to share this project with their teammates by simply adding them over where it says project members. So I'm just clicking through a couple here to give you a few examples. But again, the idea is to now use this project for any moving parts. And in this case, we're looking at new employee, new employee onboarding as the example, which is absolutely something that a service desk manager is going to oversee and be in charge of. So back tracking a little bit back to kind of my main screen here. I want to touch on the first best practice for a service desk manager using priority matrix. I've learned that a service desk manager often deals with a lot of recurring processes, whether it's on a project level or a task level. So using templates is going to absolutely work to your advantage working in this role. I set up this example for the employee onboarding template. So essentially what you all are going to be able to do is create projects and build out the process 100% like I've done here in this example. So, you know, whether it's five steps or 300 things that you have to get done as a new employee onboarding, build out that process as much as you need to do. You can even go as far as setting deadlines. When you're satisfied with what this template looks like, you can simply save project as template. And then basically what happens is when you're ready to reuse this project, maybe you have a new employee to onboard, you hit add project. And then when we go to my templates, we're going to see all of the projects that you've set up saved as a template, and you can even share these with your teammates. So we actually have templates pre created on our website that you can import to get started with. But more commonly, people typically like to set up their own templates, their own processes, so you can reuse it and save time no matter how many times you have to go back and continuously reuse this template and this project. So that's going to be best practice number one for a service desk manager. When I open up this project again, I want to show you super quickly the concept of setting a recurring task. Again, I oftentimes see this done quarterly or maybe more so like bi-weekly by a service desk manager if they need to check in on tickets, check in on 
you know, a vendor they're working with, whatever it might be. The idea is you can set a deadline and then you can make it recur, let's say weekly. So when I check this item off, it's going to temporarily go away from my quadrant, but you'll notice in just a moment, it's going to pop right back up with a new deadline for you. So again, this is going to be best practice number two for those recurring tasks. So at this point, we've covered a recurring project using templates and a recurring task by setting that repeating deadline. Those are going to be two best practices as a service desk manager who's going to be using priority matrix for recurring processes. The next thing that I want to show you is our one on one view. So as a service desk manager, you're likely overseeing a group of people and oftentimes that requires checking in with them, making sure that the tickets they're working on or you know, the, priori the priorities that you guys are working on together are not slipping through the cracks. So essentially what the priority matrix one-on-one -on -one view does is it's going to give you a centralized view of all of your priorities shared with this one person and it's going to put it together automatically for you. So looking through the scope of a service desk manager, if I've assigned 20 tickets to somebody on my team, our weekly meeting is likely going to go over, hey, are these on track and have you finished them or what's the status update with this? The one-on-one -on -one view makes this incredibly easy, automatically generates this priority list for you, and you can continuously add shared tasks as well. So when the meeting ends, you don't have to circle back, ask questions, you know, everything is just going to be here for you, ready to go. Nothing will be slipping through the cracks. I have two more things here on my notes that I would like to show you all for best practices. And then I promise we're going to open up the floor for the Q&A. And I would also love to hear how you plan to use Priority Matrix as well. So hang in there just a couple more minutes and then I'm going to turn it over to you all. Another massive responsibility of a service desk manager is ensuring that the workload balance is equal across all of your teammates. And without priority matrix, this can oftentimes look like going through emails, verbally discussing what you're working on, or just having that quick check in. Hey, how's it going? Are you overloaded or do you have more time? But at the end of the day, it's honestly impossible to have a true understanding of a workload balance without the correct tool. So with priority matrix, what you're going to be able to do is open up our workload management report. What happens here is the system automatically shows you everybody on your team who you're using priority matrix with. And from here, it's going to allow you to filter it based off of what you need to see. So for me, number of items that I have due today, that's kind of how my brain works. And that's how I prefer to see this workload management report. But if you schedule your priorities with effort hours or scheduled hours, that view is also going to be available for you. Additionally, I like to point out that you can choose the time frame that you're looking in. So from a management perspective, looking at myself here, I can say, OK, Thursday today, what does Erica have due today? If I click on this number three, it shows me all of the priorities that I have scheduled to be due today. So as a service desk manager who has a huge responsibility of making sure everybody has a decent workload balance, not overloaded, equally as importantly, not underloaded, this workload management report has taken out the legwork of manually computing this or again, having that verbal conversation that can kind of be inaccurate at times. And it's given you a perfect picture of what everybody has on their plate breaking it down as far as you want to go. If you need to modify a task from this view, you can also do it that way. So you don't have to go all the way back to your projects to update your tasks. Another thing that I wanted to touch on is in terms of using priority matrix with external parties. So let's say here, let me just add my project tag back here so it doesn't look too crazy. Another responsibility of a service desk manager is those relationships with vendors. So again, this would be a perfect example of using a template for a new management, a new vendor management process. 
But alternatively, I also like to point out that if your vendor needs to be involved with, you know, a conversation with yourself, uploading files, you know, being on track with those deadlines, you can also share this project with your external vendors. If that's something that's of interest to you, let me know and we can kind of go into what that account setup would look like. And alternatively, if you're working with your vendors through channels or through one on one chats, you can even pin those projects to the top of your Microsoft Teams system to make it just that much easier to collaborate with those external parties. If a ticket comes in as a service desk manager that needs to be escalated or delegated to somebody in a different group or department, again, that's not a problem at all. As long as they're using priority matrix with you, you simply just need to share the project with them and then you'll be able to delegate that task out to them. So going back to the presentation here, let's look at the agenda again, just to make sure I touch on everything. So we did, it looks like we were able to touch on all of these points that I definitely wanted to focus on since I know they are for sure relevant for a service desk manager. So what were the key takeaways from that presentation? As a manager, you're gonna have everything in one place for less context switching. You're gonna have contextual information when you need it most, such as during one-on-one -on -one or group meetings. And there's a, an effective visual approach for easy prioritization. So unlike other applications that you've likely looked at, a lot of the times I get feedback that it just looks like a giant list of things that you need to get done. And for a lot of people, you know, that's definitely not an effective way to manage your tasks. People love priority matrix because of the four quadrant system and the ability to further prioritize with things like icons and deadlines. With all of that being said, that was a lot of information to share with you all. I do have you pulled up on my screen off to my right. So I'm looking at the participant list and if there's questions, feel free to just raise your hand and I can actually take you off mute. Or alternatively, you can drop those questions into the chat box. I'm gonna keep an eye on you all over on my right hand side, but a couple of common questions that I typically get. Um, number one, how can I register for the next webinars? In my follow-up email, I'm gonna send you a list to all of my webinars. I have four scheduled for next week, so be sure to check those out. The next question that I typically get is how can, or rather will my company allow me to use priority matrix? The answer is yes. We've gone through a lot of hurdles for um, our security basically. And at the end of the day, we were able to achieve a Microsoft security certification, which if you have any questions about that, or if you're concerned that you may not get priority matrix approved, let me know more than happy to email it over to you. And last but not least, the question that I get a lot of the times is how do I onboard my team effectively and you know quickly as well? We offer a lot of different training options for our enterprise customers. We actually offer customized webinars and one-on-one -on -one or team training sessions, which at the end of the day are definitely gonna be the most effective way to get everybody up and running. For users on our different licenses below the enterprise option, we have an incredibly well built out YouTube channel with new videos added every single day, which is definitely going to be your best go to option for getting your team up and running with the new priority matrix. With all of that being said, I don't see any other questions coming through. So I'm going to go ahead and end the screen share and stop the recording.